DJU, as you rightfully mentioned towards the beginning of our conversation, had some moments earlier earlier in the year last year, did improve as the season wore on, and Clemson football, on the whole, still had a pretty good season, Larry. It just maybe wasn't to the standard that we had grown accustomed to seeing over the past five seasons or so, certainly under Trevor Lawrence. But um, we do kind of have this, I don't want to call it a quarterback derby, because I don't think it's a quarterback derby, but you definitely see more articles written about DJ Uyangalale and Cade Klubnik. And Klubnik went out there in the spring game. He looked good. He definitely showcased some of the tools that I think make people excited. But, like, can you help suss this out for us? There's not really a quarterback controversy at this stage, right? I mean, I guess pick your term, quarterback battle. Battle? Yeah. Like, what? what help me characterize where things stand on the quarterback side for Clemson. Here's my position all along since December has been if if DJ is not better than he was, if he's not better moving forward than he was last season, then absolutely uh, this is a quarterback competition. And Cade Klubnik is absolutely capable yeah. of breathing down his neck. You know, Now, is Dabo going to announce – Klubnik the starter on day three of August camp. No, that's not the way he he does things. Um, and you know, just looking back to the past with uh, Trevor Lawrence overtaking Kelly Bryant in uh, in 2018, and and back in 14 with Deshaun Watson overtaking Cole Stout. His sort of position and policy has been that it has to be a knockout punch for the freshman uh to to overtake the veteran starter and and, um you know you could argue he Dabo's that 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 he that that he used that policy to a fault with um with with both of those guys um particularly with Deshaun you know um they 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 lost a game at Florida State that you you could argue had he had he started uh, that game that they might have they might have won. He did start from that point forward. But anyway, um, I do think and, and and please don't misunderstand. I'm not sitting here saying, hey, it's only a matter of time. Right. Cade Klubnik's going to be the guy. It's just going to take some. His he's going to he'll 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 do it early in the regular season, and, and then they won't look back. I don't know that. Um, you know, DJ. What was so perplexing to everybody last year was man, it was it was so hard to square what we saw last season with what we saw in his two emergency starts in 2020 when he, he was subbing for Trevor Lawrence after Trevor got COVID and looked great against Boston college and Notre Dame. Um, Dabo's position for most of last season was, Hey, ain't nothing wrong with DJ. Uh, The only thing different is he doesn't have the players around him. Right. That the quarterback had, which in is fair, totally yeah, fair, absolutely, Total, totally Travis, fair statement. Yeah, Travis Etienne, Amari Rogers, Cornell Powell, you know. Uh, but I think to an extent, Dabo is sticking up for his guy. That's always been something he's 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 been good at. You know, he's he's in his foxhole with his quarterback when he faces criticism, and and that's a that's a credit to to him. Um, DJ has some things to work on and he's been working on them. He was 265 pounds at the end of last season. Yeah. He's a big um, kid. yeah, he lost, he lost 25 pounds. He was down to, I think under 240 during the spring. He's also been working with private quarterbacks coach to refine his mechanics and footwork, which he really needs to refine and hone those. I mean, when you're, when you're the biggest dude on the field and, in, in high school football, even even high level high school football that he was in in the LA area at Bosco High School, you, you can you can get away with with a lot of uh, a lot of rough edges, and you can just you know the big arm is 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 you know that sort of that's the trump card, you know yeah. that that sort of supersedes everything. But in college, when you're dealing with the speed of the game and the talent being even in a lot of cases, I mean you gotta. He just he he ha- he needs to spend a lot of time this offseason uh, working on working on his his fundamentals. 
Um, but I think it, it, it's, it feels like he is committed to that this time. Um, last year, he might not have been ready for that. He might not have been totally – he might have – maybe he needed to experience that uh, that nightmare of a season um, to really – for it to really – um yeah for the magnitude of it the importance of it to really to really hit and, and you know i mean i think we'll learn a lot in 2022 and it's not just at clemson but 2020 was a weird year for those of us who have covered college football for a while like it was unlike any year we had ever experienced before and as a result 2021 wasn't all that normal either it was a yeah. lot more normal but we saw a lot of weird stuff if only with eligibility, um, you know, we could probably list a thousand things that were just a little bit different last year. Hopefully, as we get into 2022, it'll be much more of a normal cycle. And so I'm curious to see if DJU can grow because you're right. There were issues with footwork and mechanics and balls sailing. And, you know, there were there were plenty of conversations last year, especially going into the year because of the lack of depth at the quarterback position for Clemson. Like maybe Dabo should have done something on the transfer portal here to, to boost that quarterback depth in in the event that it doesn't work out with DJU. So with the benefit of a season, with the benefit of an off season, now I'm curious to see how he does, especially now with some competition, because all you got to do is Google Clemson football spring game. And you're going to read a lot about Cade Klubnik. I know you said before that you think he's capable, but how capable because Clemson's used to seeing over the last couple seasons, really top level quarterback play with Trevor Lawrence before him, Deshaun Watson, are we talking about to that level? If he gets up and running, like where is his potential in your view? That's the part that I think we have to um, sort of distinguish, uh, sort of separate is, is I think it's unfair to, to, to say, oh, yeah, he's going to do what, <laughs> what Trevor and – It's impossible, and, right? It's yeah, impossible. like I mean I remember I'll, – I'll, this is probably a good way to sort of illustrate it. Back in the spring of 14, after Deshaun enrolled early, uh, and at the time, you take yourself back to that time, it was it was extraordinary and almost unheard of for a freshman quarterback to come right in and be a star. I forgot what the numbers were, but I did some sort of study of it, and and I know I know we've seen that in the last seven years, obviously, to a Tonga Bailoa and, and, and others. But at the time, it was like unheard of. No. And so I was still proceeding under this notion that, okay, yeah, he, he might avoid a red shirt, <laughs> you know, and we'll see. It's hard to transition to college, you know. And, and then somebody close to the team at one point is like, Larry, this dude is the best quarterback on the field, and it's not even close. And I'm <laughs> like, oh. You know, and so then fast forward, and obviously we everybody knows what happened with he turned into Superman in, in sure, pretty sure. short order. So then in the spring of 18, uh, I was at a, a uh, one of my daughter's softball games, youth softball games, and Brent Venables, his daughters played in the same league. And this is during that spring of 18. And 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 uh, we had a, uh, our, I guess our teams were playing against each other. And so I was just sitting there chatting with them, small talk. Obviously didn't have a pen and paper <laughs> out but off the hey, record right yeah off the record. just like hey man what do you what do you think of what you've seen so far and uh blah 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 yeah good 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 so what do you think of number 16 and he goes his eyes just got really big he says best freshman i've ever seen except for maybe adrian peterson wow and i'm like holy crap yeah and he said i'll tell you what we're not going to have the same problems passing this year we had last year meaning 2017 the transition between, uh, you know, from Deshaun to Kelly Bryant, you sure. know, Kelly Bryant, pretty good quarterback, but certainly not in that, in that realm. But so that's when I just started writing, Hey folks, it's, it's only a matter of time before. Yeah. So anyway, I, I say all that to say, I have not heard. I, I just haven't heard Cade being referred to with the same reverence, I guess. And that's totally fine. Like most <laughs> people aren't to be that fair. That doesn't mean like, oh my gosh, K Clubnick's a, a bust. It, it just means he's probably not those two guys, which goes back to our I think the lesson we talked about at the start of this of this interview is that the one thing we've learned over the last couple of years is man, not everybody those quarterbacks just don't grow on trees. No. Well but but yeah. I do people do tell me, hey man. 
DJ better look out because Cade is is coming. You know, Cade is is um, he's got to put on some weight. He, he's he's pretty skinny. Um, got to thicken thicken his 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 stature. Um, I don't know if he necessarily has a cannon for an arm, um, but he did it at the highest level in in Texas. Um, and and between the ears, like this kid. He's hanging out with seniors and juniors, everybody on the team. He's at he's at all the minor sport events at Clemson. I saw him at a high school basketball game at, at the local high school here. Daniel, uh, he was cheering on four of his freshman class members uh, who are who who aren't enrolled yet, but who were finishing up their senior seasons of of, of basketball, including one of Dabo's sons. And he's like arguing with yelling at the refs, like not, not in an obnoxious <laughs> way, but like he's into it. Yeah. You know, cool. and, and like for a kid to, to be, to basically come to a different world, you know, he's, he's from Texas and to immediately ingratiate himself with everybody and just to be right at home. I think that's important. And I think when we're talking to last year, you know, leadership issues, not that it was all DJ, but DJ was real quiet. You look at him on the sideline; he's just sort of standing off, you know, to him to himself. That's a factor. Having somebody come in who's who's a galvanizing presence, and so sure. in, in addition to a very a truly talented uh, quarterback. So is he Deshaun or Trevor? No, that that's unfair to uh, I think um, until further notice to to sort of put him put him uh, yeah. on that level as a as an early enrolled true freshman but is he a special talent a special person I, every every indication uh, points to that 